So this is like my fifth attempt at recording this intro for this tutorial. I'm trying to watch a Chelsea game in like 20 minutes, but I don't know at this point. I don't even know. Anyway, welcome to a brand new video guys. My name is James. I'm trying to do a tutorial today. I'm, I'm trying, okay? I'm trying to do this, okay? Today I'm going to attempt to show you how to edit urban neon light portraits in Lightroom. I did a shoot last week at a meetup where we got to do a bunch of portraits at this cool little location with this cool neon sign and a bunch of cool lighting. Over the course of the hundred photos I've edited of, from, of people in front of these neon lights, I feel that I got pretty good at it. Oh, I think so. I feel like I did. I feel like the pictures came out really, really well. So I want to show you guys what I did to get the looks on these photos that I did. Again, as always, the photos that I show you guys in this tutorial the raw file will be in the description below for you guys to download so you guys can follow along. The first photo is of a model named SongbirdCast. That's her Instagram username. I don't know her actual name, so that's what I'm using. You can go follow her in the link in the description below. This photo is really cool. I really like it a lot. It, it's got that neon sign in the top of the picture, and it just creates this whole mood. All these cool lights, and it's vibrant, and I love it. It's moody. It's just, it's a nice feeling. The next one is of an Ala Cantara Dominic. The link to his Instagram will be in the description below. Go follow him. Again, another awesome model. And for the record, I can't speak English today, so I apologize. I really do. I'm trying to do this tutorial right now, but I like my words are getting tied up in my like in my mouth, and I just can't get them out. I just can't. This photo is definitely more of a. Uh, close up you can really see more details on his face it's harder to edit i guess anyway let's get straight into this hopefully this was recording for the love of god just please be a good intro please at this point i'm like i'm tired i want to edit i want to finish this tutorial i want to edit it i want to watch my shells again dude. all right guys so this is the tutorial portion of the video let's see if we get this done in one take I gotta watch this Chelsea game. It's Chelsea versus Man City. If you follow soccer, that's a pretty big deal. It's a really big deal. So I want to watch this game, and I gotta finish the tutorial. So let's let's get straight into this, okay? So this first photo, as you guys saw before, I'll show you guys the beginning version, the raw file, not edited at all. This is it. Still a cool photo. Definitely a little dark, but that's why we edited it. This is going to be the final version edited all nice up and now this is the second photo right here now I'll show you guys the raw unedited version if it wants to load there is the raw unedited version so let's undo that let's go back to our first photo here and I'll show you guys exactly what I did to get this look obviously first the temperature I made this a little more blue than it was originally intended to be it was a little more orange. If I never touched this colors, it would be like it would be like this. But I made it a little more blue because I wanted to get those blues and the purples out more instead of the oranges, which I thought looked a little ugly. The exposure I brought down a little bit, but that's after I edited everything else. Contrast really high. I wanted to get those difference of colors and just that like dark versus light feeling in the photo because it creates more of a moody feeling and it just makes the colors more vibrant. Next highlights. A little higher just to get this just to get more a little more light out of the photo a little more light on her face because the light on her face is highlights that's what the light is on her face and with the tacos and burritos those are all highlights next the shadows I brought the shadows up just because without it it's a pretty dark photo really really dark photo so we gotta get those shadows up <laughs> next is the whites again the whites are brought up because without the whites I mean not much of a difference but I mean I just have it up there anyway. <laughs> Blacks, I'm getting brought up that much. If I bring it down a little bit, I mean, it doesn't make that much of a difference, but I still think it looks better with the blacks brought up a little bit. It lowers the contrast a little bit. I kind of like it. Next is clarity. Whenever I up the shadows in a dark picture, I always lower the clarity. Always. Because if I kept the clarity at zero, I don't know. I just don't like it. It's too, it's too detailed. I don't know. It's too much. It's too much detail, I feel like. I guess that sounds weird. I'm not really wording it that well, but I don't know. It just doesn't look good in my opinion. I like that more of a softer feel. Yes, it's more. It's too hard when it's too high of a clarity. So I bring it down to get more of a softer look. That's been my style for the past couple weeks or so when it comes to portraits. I like to get that soft feeling. Next is the vibrance. I brought the vibrance up, the saturation a little bit down. I get the saturation normal. It's just too much. Way too much saturation. 
Next is the tone curve. Again, I brought the bottom point up from the bottom left right there. Brought it up to get that fade and get rid of those like shadow to get decrease the shadows in the places where like it's just like super dark. So like our shirt became like a straight black and stuff like that. Next is the hues. I did be my yellows a little more orange, my blues a little more cyan, aqua-ish, as you can see. It doesn't make too much of a difference, but you know, you can really, you can tell, you can tell. Oh, my purple's a little more pinkish, and my magenta's a little more pinkish as well. I didn't mess with the saturations at all, I didn't really feel there was a need to. Um, the luminances, I made them all plus 28, because um, if I keep them right here, it, again, it's just too dark. And I like the luminances because, I don't know, it just makes the photo overall brighter without having mess with, mess with the shadows and the whites and the highlights and all that. I just really like the luminances. I've been using that a lot lately. Next is the split toning. I made my highlights blue and my shadows a little bit lighter of a blue down here. Um, the reason why I did that is just because I think it looks really cool. I mean, it also looks cool like this too. You really get a cool look out of it. But personally, I just like the blue in this photo. So I'm going to put that back. Um, shadow, same thing. You can mess them around. You can bring them over here. You can bring them over here. But personally, I just like the blue. Highlight priority, vignetting. I don't know why I say it like that. <laughs> I'm so tired. Um, I didn't really mess with it. You can. It looks fine with, with it or without it. I just left it out. Green, I didn't add any green. I wanted this to be more of a clean photo. And blue primaries, I made the hue a little more cyan and I made the green primaries a little more greenish as you could see and again it doesn't make too much of a difference but I like it next is the brushes that is the biggest part of these photos the brushes are the most important part of these photos in my opinion I didn't too much too much with brushes on this photo to be honest but I did it with the next one a lot of with the next one so what I did with this one is all I did was I made this brush right here over her visible skin, making it brighter, upping the exposure and the highlights to get more of like a, a clean look to it. Next, I um, used brushes on the on this little trailer here just to up the exposure and the contrast, give it more of like a nice little bright, like a bright feeling. And then this one right here, this brush right here, I edited it over her body just to up the highlights a little bit, just to make it a little bit brighter. And this one I edited over her hand, just because her hand was looking a little dark, so I made it a little bit brighter. That's pretty much it for this photo, that's like all I did, so there really wasn't much to do. So, on to the next photo here. This is of Alacantara Dominic, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce his Instagram name. This photo I did a lot too, this photo I did a, quite a bit too. So, script the bat, up the contrast, kept the highlights pretty much the same, just a little bit higher. Shadows again around plus 64 it was the same as it was last photo whites up a little bit blacks a little bit this is like the same gist of what the last photo was again clarity down a little bit this one I didn't up the vibrance because I didn't want it to be too vibrant I just wanted it to be like what it was normally I don't like messing with the colors too much I didn't want to mess with them in this photo just so I left it normal tone curve again pretty much the same exact thing as the last photo now this again this I'm pretty sure I use a similar preset as I did in the last photo. So again, the hues are literally the same thing as the last photo. I was trying to get the same look. Again, luminous is the same exact thing. The highlights, shadows, the same exact thing. And again, the color calibration, all the the um the green primaries, the blue primaries, the same exact thing. I'm pretty sure I used the same exact preset that I made for this photo. But the big difference here in this photo is what I did with my brushes. That's the big thing here. So what I did is I made I took this brush right here in the top right and I completely went over this whole wall and made it super super bright. I mean it's super bright, I mean it white looking cuz it looks super clean. It just looks super clean. If I delete this brush, look at that now. That's disgusting. That looks terrible. That's not that good of a photo now. But when it's bright, it just looks better. But one mistake a little caught right here. You you can get rid of this, or you can keep it, because, like, I don't know, I kind of like it. But you can get rid of this little, like, this brightness on his face right here. I kind of like it, to be honest. It kind of adds, like, realism to it, I guess. I'm going to fix that a little later, though. I want it to be perfect. So, I'll fix that a little bit later. Next is the blue sign up here. I completely went over 
just this half right here and I made it more blue to match with the left side. Um, just because the sign was really weird looking and the colors were all off. As you can see, uh, if I delete it, if you want to show you, yeah, so there's like random colors here, like a pinkish purple. So, again, you don't want that. So, I made it a little bit more blue in temperature and stuff like that. Next is the face, the um, highlights and the clarity a little bit. I don't usually mess with clarity that much, but I wanted to edit it on this one a little bit just because I was just messing around, experimenting. Next is the brush on the trailer, and all I did was make it the highlights a little bit higher just to get more of a shine out of it. But one of the, the big things that I did in this photo are my spot removal tool. I went crazy with my spot removal tool. Let's show you all the spots I did. I did one big one right up here. If I delete this one right here, you'll see that there's a big white mark right there. So I took a spot removal, I clicked that little thing, and I made it resemble this one up here, and you can barely tell the difference. Now next, what I did, all these little vocal lights here, they're fake. I put them there with Lightroom. You can do that with Photoshop. It's probably much easier with Photoshop, but I was already in Lightroom, so I decided, let's do it in Lightroom. All I did was take one single bokeh light. This is the original one right here. Where my, where my mouse is, that's the original bokeh light, and I would click a random spot on the wall, and then I would drag it, that point to the original one, and it would make it look normal. So I'll show you. So for example, let's take this one right here. Let's make a bokeh light right there, and what we'll do is we'll put it right, right over here, And bam, you have a new bokeh light. Um, I should have made this spot a little bit bigger, but you get the gist of it. I'm going to delete that one because I, I feel like I like the way it was. I don't want that one there. But anyway, guys, that is this photo. That is really all it was. It was a very, very simple photo. Um, both were, for the most part, all those little things that I added were unnecessary, but I liked it. It added a little more oomph to it. Anyway, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please be sure to leave a like, a comment. Let me know which tutorial you guys want to see in the future. Go on my Instagram, look at my photos, and let me know what kind of like what photos you want to see by commenting on them. If you want to see a tutorial for it, comment on it. Let me know what you guys want. Be sure to go follow me on Instagram. I post every single day all kinds of photos, portraits, street photography, um, urban photos, all stuff like that. Be sure to subscribe for more photography vlogs, tutorials. And short films, hopefully in the future, I keep saying I'm going to release short films, but I still haven't worked on any yet. I have a bunch of ideas, but I haven't executed any of them yet, so I'm going to be doing that super, super soon. And let's see, guys. My name is James. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. We're just chilling above this, above this gorge. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Oh, oh that would have been crazy. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just in LA, you know, casual. No big deal. No big deal.